Welcome to the Way to Go podcast. I'm Bill McMinn from Eagleville Bible Church. Along with me is Mark Hosseller. Talking about John 5, we talked about it in one podcast already where there's this great miracle, Paul Bethesda. Uh, Jesus Christ heals a lame man. It's on the Sabbath. They're arguing about that. He's trying to explain, hey, I'm doing what the Father wants me to do. The Father is always working. I'm doing the will of God. Yeah. So all that stuff is super, super significant because one of the things I would like to talk about in this segment is just seeking God's will. It's just seeking what does God want me to do anyway. That's great. And in verse yeah. 30, I can do nothing on my own. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just because I seek not my own will, but the will of him who sent me. And I look at what he's talking about, judgment. Sometimes judgment is discernment. And he has healed a man on the Sabbath day. He's getting questioned about that. Why are you healing mm -hmm. on the Sabbath day? He's saying this, I can do nothing on my own. As I hear, I judge my judgment is just because I seek not my own will, but the one of him who sent me. You guys are, are saying I lack discernment because I healed a man on the Sabbath. Exactly, right. I'm saying that I'm doing what God wants. When we do the right thing, there may be people in our world who say you lack discernment. You lack yep. it. Right. Yeah, because it looks sloppy. Right. There's a lot of times gracefulness, or gra is that the right word? Grace, being gracious. That's what I want right. to say. Um, looks sloppy. There's right. times where uh, you go, you step in and help somebody out, and it, it feels like enablement. It feels like you know, it feels like the wrong thing to do. Where in the end result, if you're led by the Spirit, of course, you want to pray through these things. You want to you want to trust God's working in you. It says in the Scriptures that He gives us the desires of our heart. You know, right. when we're close to Him, we got to stay in touch with Him. All right, I'm not, you know, don't go out there and try to do your own thing. Right, follow God. But right. once you know, once you feel settled and peace is in you about a decision, make the decision, right. follow it by faith, do it. It may look sloppy to others. It may look like, man, you, you're making a wrong decision. But if you know it, if you know in your heart, do it. The worst right. thing you could do is reject what you know God's telling you to right. do. You know, follow his will, right. follow what he's saying, telling you to do. And, and sometimes people don't follow God's will because they get caught up in the emotion of something, or maybe something's a little bit different than they thought it would look like. Uh, maybe somebody comes in a church and they think, wow, the music's different than what I'm used to. Yeah. yeah oh, right. they're singing mm -hmm. these kind of songs or, oh, whatever it is. It doesn't mean that we're not doing God's will That's yeah. because we have to discern the Lord's will. Uh, there are times where you could take a stand for righteousness. You could take a stand for morality. Hey, I'm an honest person. People might, mm -hmm. oh, you know, you can get it. No, no, wait. I want to do what God wants me to do. And I've got to be yeah. willing to do that no matter what. So that's that, seeking God's will. The other thing I would like to say real quick, Bill, on that is sometimes we can get caught up. I was in this situation for a while where I can get caught up in trying to find this, this kind of mystical will of God over here. And I wasn't following his clearly laid out will for my life right, right in front of me. Right. Well, why would God reveal another will he has for my life if I've chosen not to be faithful with the ones that he's laid out, right? Yeah, he ten says, commandments. Exactly, Ten right. Commandments. He says, hey, flee sexual immorality, for this is the will of God for you. Right. I didn't listen to that. I was still sexually immoral. At a well, time. At a yeah. time. Yeah, at a time. So well, why we're not would, talking about no, last week. No, okay, right. Just to be clear. So we, why are we, right. why would I expect God to reveal some some will over here that I'm really wanting to know what job to go to or, or you know, something over here when I haven't been faithful with the direct will from the word of God right in front right. of me? He's given us clear direction from there. I right. bet you if you're just surrendered to that alone, a lot of your confusion and chaos in your life will go away right. he was getting questioned though i mean he was getting questioned about what he was doing and there are mm -hmm. times we may get questioned for That's what true. we're doing we may get questioned on why we go to church why do you go to church why do you worship sometimes people didn't want to go because of covid you know so then other people who went you know got quite why are you going oh, there were questions why are you singing why are you doing we're trying to discern what God wants us to do yep. and, and use the best discernment that we have, whatever it is. So to me, I can't work. Cause he's going to say later on, I'm not here for the glory of people. I'm here for the glory of God. I can't worry about what everyone else says. That's I have to exactly. worry about what God is telling me to yeah. do. And sometimes people do make decisions that we've encountered. They're very emotional. Uh, they're, somebody said something, they're mad. They got mm -hmm. their nose bent out of joint. I'm going to quit now. I'm going to leave everyone I know. And, 
And in some ways I get that because like I told someone recently, if I had a dollar for every time I wanted to quit, you know, I'd be a rich man because I'm sure there's plenty of times you felt like quitting at a moment. Yeah. But that's emotion. You know, what, what is God's will really? And I'd always come back to what does God really want me to do? Now, one mm-hmm. thing about Jesus Christ, one of the will of God is that we believe in Jesus Christ. And he's starting to talk about his testimony because they're questioning him on who he is. Is he really the son of God? He's going to come back. Listen, I'm not saying that I am. Listen to the testimony about me. Right. He said, if I'm just talking about myself, then there's no good testimony. But he said this, here, here's the testimony. Therefore, another who bears witness about me, this is verse 32, and I know that the testimony that he bears about me is true. You sent to John, and he has borne witness to the truth. Not that the testimony that I receive is from man, but I say these things so that you may be saved. He was a burning light and a shining lamp, and you were willing to rejoice for a while in that light. So he says, one of the testimonies to me is John. Mm -hmm. He said of Jesus, behold, the Lamb of God, it takes away the sins of the world. Part of the testimony of Jesus Christ that he next points to is the works of God. He just healed a man who was lame for 38 years. That doesn't bear testimony that Jesus Christ is really God's son? Because that's the question. Is Jesus Christ really God's son? Well, John the Baptist said so. He also says, my works say so. The works that I'm doing indicate that I'm Like you said in our last uh, podcast, uh, who else does this kind of thing? Right. Where you tell the guy, just tell a guy that's been laying there for 38 years, hey, stand up and walk. Get your mat, walk. And he does it. Right. You know what I mean? Well, to me, this points back to John 1. Right. Where we just talked about a few weeks ago. Um, in John 1, he says, uh, John wasn't the light. He came testifying of the light. Right. The light was Jesus Christ, and right. in him was the life for all mankind. Right. You know? And so that's the testimony. Right. And, and it also a- talks about, it reminds me of First John 5, right? First John, so the same author... Uh, the Apostle John, not John the Baptist, the Apostle John, in 1 John 5 talks about how you can be assured of eternal life. How can you be assured of eternal life? By believing the testimony of the Son. Right. You know, so we have this connection happening. I think for, in 1 John 5, John's remembering Jesus' right. words here. He's like, hey, oh, right. guys, check this out. Like, I heard Christ teach right. about this is my testimony, right. you know. But you're not going to listen. Let's face it. You're not going to want to come to church or become a Christian if you don't really believe that Jesus Christ who is who he is. It's true. And that's what he said in John 13. I want you to believe yep. that I am who I am. So, and the testimony is John the Baptist. The testimony is the works of God. He said this, the Father has given me works to accomplish. The very works that I am doing bear witness about me that the Father has sent me. I don't know how it can be clearer. Mm-hmm. You just healed a lame guy who hasn't walked <laughs> right. for 38 years. Yeah. He's saying clearly that shows I'm not just some guy making, just kind of talking. Yep. I mean, I'm, I'm walking it. He mm-hmm. said the father in verse 37, the father who sent me has himself born witness about me. His voice you have never heard. His form you have never seen. Jesus has. He goes, you really haven't heard his voice. You haven't seen his form. You don't really know him. I know him. But the Father through the Spirit in John 16, you know, the Spirit will convict the world of judgment and sin and righteousness. There are times where a person's just going to know there's something about this. There's something I need to look into. There's something going on here where God is going to be the one that's actually revealing to a human being, that Jesus Christ, the way, the truth, the life, there's going to be a stirring in your heart. There's going to be something going on that's also going to give testimony to that. And what I think what he was, the underlying message here is, is you are not of God. You do not recognize him. Right. You, you, he can put him, God put himself right in front of them. Right. In the form of Christ. He is the, the visible image of the invisible God. That's who Christ is. He put himself right in front of these people, and they didn't recognize him. Right. They didn't recognize him. They were way too stuck on tradition and wrote just uh, religiosity. Right. They missed God. We can do that all the time, Bill. (laughs) A couple weeks ago, you said in the sermon, I loved it. You said, hey, we can come here, and we can go through the motions. We can look like we have it. And we'll miss the spirit of worship. Right. We'll miss the spirit of God. Because we're doing all. it mechanically because and not in our heart. Because we just do it mechanically. Now, the other thing I want to say is back in verse 27, 
He says a key phrase, son of man. Jesus loved to refer to himself as the son of man. And when he did that, he also pointed back to what the scriptures testify about himself. In Daniel 7, in Daniel chapter 7, he says, I was watching in the night visions and with the clouds of the sky, one like a son of man was approaching. He went up to the ancient of days and was escorted before him. To him was giving ruling authority. This is the authority that we're talking about, judgment in John 5. Ruling authority, honor, and sovereignty. All people, nation, and language groups were serving him. His authority is eternal and will never pass away. His kingdom will never be destroyed. Right. That's who Jesus said he was. Right. Right there. Right. And they hated it. Right. They couldn't stand it. They didn't know right. what to do with he's it. He's the Son of Man, and that's a reference to the Son of Man, is mm-hmm. what you're saying. Right. Yeah. Well, he says, that getting back to this testimony in John uh, 5, it's John the Baptist gave testimony, the works of God, the Father is going to put it in our heart. He also says the scriptures. And he said that, he said, you do not have this word abiding in you, for you do not believe the one he has sent, because it's already in the Bible. They believe the Old Testament. They didn't yeah, question that I just read it. God. Daniel right. chapter 7, there it is. Right. You, know? <laughs> you believe it. You search the scriptures because you think in them you have eternal life. And it is they that bear witness about me. So they're trying to go to heaven by, hey, if we go do the Passover, if we do these feasts, if we sacrifice the animals, if we you know, do everything, then they put a bunch of their own rules in there, a bunch of man-made rules. And if we do all these things, he goes, you think that you're going to have eternal life, not realizing that eternal life comes through faith in Jesus Christ. That's so right. he's saying the very scriptures that you guys are seeking, and by the way, we should see scripture, we should read it, oh, yeah. are all going to point out to the fact mm-hmm. that we come on. But then he indicts them because he says, this is the testimony but he indicts them, and I think it's significant to look at it because we got evaluated our own lives there. In verse 40, you mm. refuse to come to me that you may have life. One of the things that he indicts on humankind, the people that you refuse, you will not come to me. This is a problem. And when people, Mark, have that attitude, I will not. I will not come to Christ. I will not listen. I will. It's not a good place to be. Sometimes people get hurt. Sometimes I hear the term church hurt. Uh, just talk to a family. Yeah, you know, our son was all over the map because, you know, this something happened in church or whatever. And so he kind of believed and he didn't and he didn't and he didn't. And it's like, okay, well, you... To refuse to come to Jesus Christ is a problem. Forget what people did. Forget what people said. Forget if you saw a bad example. Forget if you were bored in church growing up. It's nothing to do with it. Are we willing to come to Jesus Christ? He also indicts them because he says in verse 42, he says, I know that you do not have the love of God within you. Mm. How does he know that? Because they didn't care about the guy that he just healed that had been there for 38 years. All they were worried about is you carried your mat on the Sabbath day. They didn't care that he was healed. They didn't care about what he'd gone through. They're not rejoicing over there. They're not saying that's the greatest thing in the world. He said, because you don't care because it wasn't done your way. If God uses somebody in the church and there's uh, whoever goes out and uh, somebody turns their lives around to the Lord, we're not going to say, well, how could God work through them? Blah, 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 blah. Whoa, wait a minute. There's nothing to do with it. That's right. Was that person helped? Did that person come around? Praise do you God. even care about that's, that person? That's right. I care and, more, way more about the person than the person exactly getting the credit right. for it. That's exactly right. right. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree 100%. I mean, I just read it last night in First John where he says, if you, if you have fellowship in the darkness and you say you have fellowship with God and you stay in the darkness, you don't have fellowship at all because you don't fellowship with one another. Right. And he, what these guys were doing was rejecting Christ. Right. And in that, they were rejecting God's solution right. for all of them. Right. You know? And it's like, why, why were they doing but, that? But go to the personal in our life, in reality. Mm-hmm. There are plenty of people that keep Jesus an arm length away. I'm not saying those listening to this show probably isn't you. There are people out there who are keeping Jesus at an arm's length away because they want to do what they want to do. They want to live the way they want to live. They don't want him. This is one of the indictments that we have to look out for, refusing to come to God, not loving people the way that we should. 
they refuse to accept Christ in verse 43. It says, I have come in my Father's name, and you do not receive me. Mm -hmm. If another comes in his own name, you receive him. So they're like, if somebody else comes along, you have no problem receiving them. I come in the Father's name. You're like, oh, because you said the Father's name. Oh, sorry, you can't receive you. <laughs> That's nuts. Why are we rejecting? And I, I like this idea of the reception of mm. Christ. I, re I receive you as my Savior. I receive you as coming from God. I believe in that. Yeah. And the other indictment is this. How can you believe when you receive glory from one another and do not seek the glory that comes from the only God? Mm. You're way more worried about what your friends say than you are what God says. Oh Mark, now goodness. this is an, wow. an indictment. I look at the statement. I read it. I thought it was an ouch statement. He says in verse 41, he said, I do not receive glory from people. I'm not interested. He's not worried. And what he's saying is, listen, I'm not worried that you're upset. <laughs> that I healed a guy on the Sabbath exactly day. Right. You guys are all worried about you approved of yourself. And, and that's their you. testimony. How, what is their testimony that they're on the right way? Joe said yeah. <laughs> that <laughs> right. what Bill said was okay. Or it would be like this. I said Mark was okay, and Mark said I was okay, and Steve said we were okay, and we said Steve was okay, and we all said Adam was okay, and he said we're, we're approving of ourselves. That means nothing. Nothing. Yep. absolutely nothing yep. what matters is that god approve of what you did that's what yep. matters uh, having a bunch of people this reminds me of one of the things i hate about the oscars and those awards it's a, it's a group of celebrity status people patting themselves on the back all the time yeah and i can hardly stand it right you know what i'm saying it's just mm -hmm. like you guys have whole organizations that are set up to do nothing but praise your organization. Wow. It would be like us as a wow. church setting up our own awards so we could reward ourselves every year. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like we're setting up our own awards so we could award ourselves. Mm. I'm like, what What does this have to do with life? Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. This is like... I'm not, I'm not setting up organizations to award me, to glorify me. Man, I want the glory that comes from, I want God to say, well done. Amen. Me and you uh, saying, well, you and me approving of each other doesn't mean God's approving. We need to make sure God's approving. If you're more worried about what people think than you are what God thinks, then that's a problem. That is going to be a huge problem. Absolutely. And it's going right. to stop you just like them. It's going to stop you from recognizing right. God and his correction in your life. Right. I love that too, Bill, where John one twelve, you know, where you said receiving, you know, John one twelve, he says to those who receive and to those who believe in his name, to them, he has given them the right to be called the children of right. God. And that's for everybody listening here that, that, you know, Jesus Christ has his grace is available to all who call upon him for right. salvation to accept that he is the authority of this world. I mean, he is. Right. Christ is the authority, you know, and yes. we have to accept him as that over but, but, our life. And here's what, Lord, he, and here's what he's you know. saying. Believe in me. I mean, that's what his authority is saying. I mean, That's like it. Christ is not, Christ came to give, give us the best life possible. It's not like some people think, well, if I give Christ authority over my life, he's going to ask me to do, a, you know, be a missionary <laughs> in Africa or he's going to, you know, no. uh, or he's going to take all my fun away. Uh, that's, that's not true. Uh, typically the fun that you, I, I don't know. I've been, I've been a Christian for a long time. I've, I have a ton of fun. That's all I can say. So well, that, and, that's and what it's, it right, and it's a, it's a right kind of fun, but let's go back over it. Here's what he's saying coming down the end of John five. You can't miss it. There is testimony that Jesus really is God's son. John the Baptist said it. Mm -hmm. The works he did said it. The Father said it. Scriptures point to it. There's all kinds of testimony that we can really believe. Yes. He indicts the religious people around him because they won't come to him. They don't love people. They refuse to accept Christ. They're all patting themselves on the back. They glory in themselves. You have to evaluate this. Am I caught up in any of this? I'm more worried about what people said. Yeah. I've kind of gotten away from loving people. I don't really care about them. I'm not really reading the Bible. I'm not really receiving the word of God because that's huge. And he said that at the end of the thing, he says to them, you, if you believe the Moses, you would believe in me, but they didn't believe in Moses. And I think about the importance of believing the Bible because this man, there's a rich man in the Bible and he's down in the place of torment. Mm -hmm. He asked for Lazarus the poor man, the poor beggar who's in a place of comfort, he asked him to be sent back to his brothers. If, they're if they see Lazarus raised from the dead, my brothers will believe and they'll not come to this okay. place. And what he was told was this, if they don't believe in the Bible, they're not going to believe that. Yeah. If you already have scripture. So basically I have everything I need to for my faith to be firm. It's true. Because I have the Bible. 
The question isn't whether I have the Bible. The question then is, am I reading the Bible? Am I even checking into it at all? It would be extremely and profoundly unwise to not pick up your Bible and read it. That's true. I would, my, my final word here as we close this podcast for myself would be, be careful. Be careful where you're looking for life or fulfillment. Right. That's what these guys got wrong. They were looking to the wrong thing for life. That They were actually looking to those old traditions to produce something that only right. Jesus was going right. to produce, and that right. was eternal life and fulfillment. Like you right. said, John 10.10, 10, I came that they may have life and life to the fullest. Christ wants us to have a full, right. vibrant Absolutely. life, Absolutely. but it's only found in him. Right. Be careful that you don't go out there chasing everything else for right. what only Christ can provide. Yeah, I mean, following Jesus Christ is the best life possible. There's That's no right. doubt about it. I would encourage you to, just as my ending encouragement here in John chapter 5, pick up the Bible and read it for yourself. Yeah. Yeah. You know, there, there's a lot to learn here. It's a constant inspiration to me. It, it's awesome. Just go ahead and read it. You guys all have a great and a blessed week.